Hello everyone, today I wanted to talk about some theory regarding PID controllers for multi-rotors. Now, specifically, I'm going to talk about the D-term and why having a higher D-gain is desirable. However, I'm also going to explain why the D-gain can be responsible for overheating the motors on a multi-rotor and potentially even burning them out in extreme cases. Now, if you learn something from this video or you enjoy it, make sure you do like the video and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. So in order to understand the importance of the D-term and why it can cause hot motors, first we need a basic understanding of a PID controller. So I'm going to explain that now. So here we have a graph with time on the horizontal axis and then rate of rotation omega on the vertical axis. And a PID controller responds to the amount of error in the system. We have our commanded rate of rotation, our RC signal, and then we have our actual rate of rotation measured by the gyro. And the difference between the commanded rate of rotation and the actual rate of rotation is our error. And we're trying to get rid of the error with our PID controller so that the quad matches what we are commanding it to do with the RC signal. So the next graph here is just the error in the rate of rotation. And it's gonna look something like this for this simple case. And this is actually what the P term responds to. So the P term basically multiplies this amount of error by some value, and then that gets mixed into your motor outputs. Now, if we integrate this graph, this error, this is actually going to give us our positional error, theta, our angle, and the integral is just the area under the curve. So if we just look at this graph as time goes on, we can plot the area under the curve, which is going to look something like this for this particular case. And this is what the I term reacts to. And because it's looking over a span of time to figure out the area. This is why the I term is good for long-term errors and reacting to long-term errors. So for example, if maybe your battery is too far rearwards on your quad, then your quad will have a tendency to pitch up slowly. And that kind of error accumulates slowly over time. And because it accumulates over time and integrals look at the area under the curve over time, then the I term is very good at reacting to that kind of error. Now, if we go the other direction and we take the derivative of the angular velocity error, that is the slope of the angular velocity error. So the rate of change of the angular velocity, also known as the angular acceleration, alpha. And in this case, the slope for any point in time on this particular graph is just always a constant positive value. So for this case, that's the error. And this is what the D term reacts to. So we multiply this amount of error by some gain value, some constant value, and then that also gets mixed into the motor output. So you have three values that get mixed into the motor outputs, and that's the basis of how a PID controller works. And these three terms just work together to try to minimize the amount of error in the system. So let's talk about hot motors first. So if the gyro signal has just a little bit of noise in it, let's take a look at what happens to these three graphs. So say the gyro signal now looks like that. For the angular velocity error, it's the RC rate minus the gyro rate. So this amount of noise in the gyro signal is going to make its way through into our angular velocity error, our rate of rotation error. So the severity of this noise stays the same for the P term, essentially. When we integrate to figure out our I term, we're looking at area under the curve. And when you take the integral to get the area under the curve, it actually has a bit of a smoothing effect. So the I term is going to look actually very similar to how it did before we introduced a little bit of noise to the system. And this is why you can run a very wide range of I terms and really not risk smoking your motors or have anything super catastrophic happen on your drone. However, if we go the other direction and we look at the D term, we are taking the derivative of the angular velocity error. And that means once again, we're looking at the slope. And because there's just this little bit of noise, 
it's positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, then positive, then negative as time goes on. And when we plot that, it looks crazy. It's just like this, essentially. So when you take the derivative, it amplifies noise. And this is the potential problem with the D term. It has a noise amplification characteristic if there's any noise in our error signal. So this is what causes hot motors because you have the D term essentially telling the motors to spool up, slow down, spool up, slow down, spool up, slow down. And this gets worse as the D gain is higher because you're basically multiplying this noise by a bigger value, which just exacerbates the problem. Why your motors will get burned up is because this happens extremely fast. And because of this, the ESCs are sending an insane amount of power to the motors, telling them to spool up, slow down extremely fast. And in reality, the speed of the motors isn't really changing very much. So all that power just turns into heat and that can fry your motors. So that's why getting rid of noise in the gyro signal is so incredibly important. And a similar thing can happen if you have a noisy RC signal. So a lot of times the RC signal is very stair-steppy like this and that can have a similar effect with the D term. So that's why in Betaflight for the RC signal, there is RC smoothing so that the derivative is very noise free. And there's also, of course, all of the different gyro filters. There's notch filters, dynamic notch filters, RPM filters, etc. And in Betaflight itself, the D term has a separate filter just to deal with the potential amplification of noise that can occur with the D term specifically. So you may be thinking, well, why not just run a low D gain value so that the amplification of noise is very low and you just don't have to worry about smoked motors. And in reality, this is what a lot of people do. The Betaflight defaults, for instance, are very conservative and that is so people don't really smoke their motors right off the bat and have a bad experience with the firmware. And of course, a lot of people just run the default values. However, the problem with running a low D gain is that you lose response. So I'm going to explain how that works now. So this next graph that I'm gonna draw is called a step response. So this is just basically if you change the commanded rate of rotation instantly. So a good example of this is when you go from center stick to full stick really fast to make a quick flip or something like that. So this is your desired rate of rotation. And then you're going to have a response, maybe something like this. So this is slightly under damped, but under damped, over damped and critically damped is a topic for another video. And this takes some amount of time to reach the desired rate of rotation. And then of course it overshoots a little bit and whatnot, depending on how we have our PID value set up. But once again, that's a topic for a different video. We can maintain this same exact general shape with the same amount of overshoot and whatnot if we maintain the same ratio of P gain and D gain. However, if we increase the P gain and D gain by the same amount, say we double both of them, we can actually increase the response time while maintaining the same general characteristic. So maybe that would look something like this. So everything happens a little bit faster. Your response time improves by this amount of time, but you can see the general response characteristic stays the same. For example, our overshoot is the same height. So essentially, if you increase the P and D gains by the same amount, it's not like you're going to increase any undesirable characteristics such as bounce back. Everything's just gonna happen faster. And that means that your quad is more responsive and the amount of error is lower. So because you want to increase P and D as much as possible while maintaining the same ratio between them, that basically means that you want to be running the highest amount of D gain possible. And because of the noise amplification characteristic of taking the derivative and creating the D gain, the D term tends to be the limiting factor when tuning your quad. So that's why whenever you increase the D gain, you want to be checking for hot motors and noise in the system essentially because of that noise amplification. And you generally want to be running the highest D gain possible without smoking your motors. Now, say you have no noise in your system at all. Well, theoretically, you can just keep increasing P and D up to infinity. However, at some point, it won't do anything else because your motors will become saturated, which means that 
basically the ESCs are commanding them to create as much torque as possible, and then it becomes a mechanical limitation of the system instead of a tuning limitation of the system. So essentially the ideal PID tune is where you're running a high enough D gain so that the motors are getting maxed out. And of course you want to have the P gain increased by a proportional amount. So in summary, the D gain can cause hot motors because taking the derivative amplifies noise, but you want to be running the highest D gain possible in order to get the most responsive drone. So I hope you guys learned something from this video or enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can also throw me a couple bucks on Patreon. Let me know down in the comments below what other kinds of drone theory you want to see in the future. And I also have a free Discord server. Link to that is in the description. And lastly, I also have an Instagram page, timmy.r.c. Thanks for watching.